Hey guys, and welcome into Machine Heads from CompactEquipment.com. Look, if you love construction equipment and you love talking about construction equipment, well, you're in the right place. Because here on Machine Heads, we don't just talk horsepower and basic specs. We dig deep, detailing the why and how behind the improvements pushing the latest compact equipment forward. And I'm your host, Wayne Grayson. Today on Machine Heads, we're welcoming in a special guest to talk about drum mulchers. Now that guest is Buck Storley. He is the aftermarket director for Yanmar North America, which includes the ASV brand. Now during our chat with Buck, we discuss everything you need to know, not just about the drum mulcher attachment, but what you need to know when you go in to buy a new drum mulching attachment and how to find the right one for your particular needs. Now, that includes why it's such a popular tool for land clearing applications in the first place, the differences in design between various models, teeth options, and a lot more. In our conversation with Buck, we also spent some time talking about the ASV brand and the lineups of compact track loaders and drum mulchers that ASV manufactures and what the ASV brand in particular brings to the table when it comes to forestry spec equipment. All right, so let's get into it. Here's our conversation with Buck Storley of Yanmar North America brand ASV. Hey everyone, welcome in. Uh, today we're pleased to to welcome in Buck Storley. Buck, you are the aftermarket director of Yanmar Compact Equipment. Uh, North America, which includes uh, the amazing ASV brand, uh, which is perfect because today we're going to be talking about mulching attachments. So, Buck, thanks so much for joining us. Welcome in, man. How are you? Yeah, doing great, Wayne, and thanks for having me. Buck, what is the most popular uh, mulching attachment today uh, and why? Yeah, well, I mean, certainly for us, on our compact track loaders, the drum mulchers are, you know, kind of taking the industry by storm. They seem to be the most popular and and they've really made an upswing in the last few years. And, you know, there are different types of mulching attachments out there. I mean, you can do a, you can do a disc mower, you can do a disc mulcher, you can do a drum mulcher. And, you know, the drum mulchers uh, seem to be having success in the fact that they can, you know, not only process material and get that material on the ground, but they can do a really nice job of cleaning that material up once it's on the ground. That drum kind of acting like a vacuum, picking that material back up and giving you the ability to, you know, mulch it into very fine material or even go to the next level, giving you the ability to really till it into the ground, you know, do a, a finished product that's in a sense to get in and very quick to regrow it. So. Yeah, awesome. Um, and so um, getting into drum mulchers uh, a, a little bit, um, yeah, I know that, that for, a, for a lot of guys out there, um, it, it really has kind of become the, the center, uh, the centerpiece really of their, uh, of their operation. Um, and so, Tell us a little bit about um, the where where these uh, mulchers start. Uh, what the options that you have uh, for for these drum mulchers, and kind of we'll, we'll get into talking a little bit about um, how you should go about uh, choosing one for your operation. Yeah, sure. I mean, as far as drum mulcher options, there are there are lots of different uh, styles and different options out there. But I'd say the you know the biggest choice starts with uh, what I'd call maybe an open tool and a uh, depth control style, right? So, I mean, in the drum mulcher itself, you can choose an open tool, which uh, in, in most cases gives you the quickest, uh, maybe knockdown power, just kind of has an open tool out there, can, can beat that to death, or you can go with what we call a depth control, where you have a, a usually a guided ring that will help control the amount of material that's fed into the tooth. So, you know, that guided uh, ring, most of the time we'll mate that. There are two different types of tools can choose on that drum. You can have a carbide tool or you can have what we call a knife tool. And uh, a depth control typically mates the best with the knife tool. It gives you essentially that kind of that sharp act type, uh, you know, type uh, action. And you can quickly mulch trees, mulch material, get it down. And the depth control keeps you from overheating the material in a sense, from plugging up your drum and slowing it down. Contrarily, an open drum is typically matched with the carbide tool, and it acts a little bit more like a, uh, a beater to knock a tree down. So you kind of pound that thing to death, get it down on the ground, and then mulch it. Uh, a drum or a carbide, an open tool or a carbide by nature will typically be a little bit uh, slower in its mulching and its processing than a knife tool. But it's also more resilient to things like rocky ground conditions and hard ground, right? That carbide can withstand that condition and then it also gives you ability to to actually process material into the ground to till it in so when you're making that decision you got to decide right do we need to till the material into the ground what type of ground conditions am i dealing with and what kind of process finish do i have to have 
Yeah, and um, whenever it comes to hydraulics, um, you know, what are some of the considerations that you'll need to to take too? Because you know, some of, some of this is making sure that you you already have the right machine for the job. And so, when it when it comes to hydraulics, what are really your your options for for these machines or for these attachments? So, I mean, we we'll offer drum mulchers. We got uh, we've got machines anywhere from sixty five horsepower and up that we would offer the drum mulcher with, and you know that really means in terms of flow anywhere from twenty eight GPM and up. Um, we don't necessarily do the drum mulchers on smaller machines than that because they are a high horsepower consuming attachment. They, uh, and I'll just say in terms of horsepower and flow, when it comes to drum mulching, uh, more is better. Right? So, um, we build all the way to the industry's largest uh, horsepower, highest flow uh, machine in our RT135, right at 132 horsepower and 50 GPM. And when it comes to turning a drum mulcher, that machine absolutely will do it best. And, you know, a 65 horsepower machine will will do it. But you get different performance characteristics all the way from, from small and up. So I would say when choosing flow, know that, you know, these are a high horsepower, high consuming um, attachment. And typically more is better. And probably the next piece when, you know, when choosing flow is to choose a cooling package that goes along with it. So along with drawing horsepower with these drums, they also build heat and work in extreme environments so you need you know something that's got the power and flow to do the job and something that's got the cooling package to do that job day in day out yeah i mean and if uh you know let's say that you're you're trying to be you know competitive uh in 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 this kind of uh this application um you know what 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 type of hydraulic flow what type of horsepower do you guys really really recommend if this is something that you're planning on uh, getting out there and doing a lot yeah, so you know, we, we we would I would say when we look at our 65, 75 horsepower class machines, you know, and that with that 28 to 35 GPM flow, those are generally what I would recommend in terms of a, a part-time um, mulcher, right? So you're maybe a contractor who's a landscaper or a construction um, 75, 80 percent of the time, and you do a little bit of mulching on the side, 20, 30 percent of the time, right? That class of machines makes sense. Now, if you're a full-time mulcher and that's what you do and that's your business i would recommend 100 horsepower 40 gpm and above right and and uh, your processing rate is directly related to that number right an rt 135 at 132 horsepower and 50 gpm will process more material than say our vt 100 at 100 horsepower and 40 gpm right you uh you can directly relate you know horsepower and flow to material processing time and maybe think about the amount of your business that's dedicated to that type of work and how, how fast you want to process it uh, when making your decision. Yeah. And, and obviously you guys too, and I think another consideration to kind of take uh, when it comes to the machine that you're pairing uh, this attachment with, um, I'm interested to get your take on kind of like the difference between the guys that are maybe doing it 20 to 30% of the time versus the guys who are going to be doing it uh, a lot more. Uh, but, it, but you know, the, the armor uh, of the machine and kind of like, you know, how, how guarded, uh, the machine is from from debris and everything else like that. Uh, how you know uh, is that a time split decision as well, or is that just a you? If you know you're going to be doing it and you can and you can afford it, then you need to have as much kind of protection as possible. What what is your take on that? Yeah, I think the protection it's mandatory regardless, right? So I just I would say, and, and the first thing to think about is safety, right? Safety first. You. You know, these mulchers, it's, it's what I would call a full contact environment. So you're out there, you're banging into trees, that mulcher itself is throwing material, it's throwing rock. It has tools on it that are moving at a high rate of speed. You know, any of these things can uh, can cause flying debris. So uh, you want to protect uh, the, the environment around you, but you want to protect that, that man in the cab. So, I mean, first and foremost, you've got to have the proper cab protection if you're going mulch. And I would say that's true whether you're doing it, you know, 5% of the time or 100% of the time. Don't put yourself at risk. Make sure you've got something with a poly door, something with the proper ROP structure protection, those things uh, for the operator. And, you know, secondarily, if you're, you know, if you're doing it, you know, 
five, 10, 20% of the time, okay, you got to have those things to protect the operator. But when you get into that, you know, higher usage rate, you're doing it, you know, 30, 40, 50, 80, hundred percent of the time. Okay. Now you want to protect your machine. It's worth the investment to make sure your machine is fully protected. You've got to, you know, we make dedicated forestry models that come with all that equipment right from the factory, right? You spend a little more up front, but you've got the hood protection, the radiator protection, the cooler protection to make sure that if you're in the woods 100% of the time, the machine, you know, is going to stand up to that beating. You're not going to be, you know, buying a new hood every other day or a new radiator because you accidentally backed into something. Right. Yeah. And I, th I think it's a perfect segue kind of for uh, for the maintenance side of things. Uh, whenever you outfit your machine to do this type of work, and this is, uh, you know, we can talk a little bit of, we can talk about the, 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 the part-time guys and the full-time guys, but what are, what are kind of some, maybe the differences between those two in terms of what you can expect from, from the maintenance aspect of this? Because like you said, it is, it is a full contact. It is a, a really dirty job. Uh, so like, what, what are some of the things that you guys recommend in terms of making sure that you're protecting your investment uh, and uh, keeping these things operational and, and ready to go whenever you need them? Yes. I mean, with multi, with forestry application, the maintenance aspect does go up, right? So if you think about landscaping and construction, you're, you're pushing around dirt, you're moving, rock, you're moving material. Um, but when you get into forestry, now you're mulching, grinding, hitting, and, uh, and destroying that material. And a lot of times that material turns into dust, mulch, uh, things in the air. So, you know, if the increase in maintenance typically comes from things like the engine air filter, obviously the drum mulchers out there, it's just, it's creating dust. I think of the old Charlie Brown and Big Pan, right? Dust is in front of you on that, on that drum and it's, uh, it's stirring it up and you're driving into it all the time, right? So you got to maintain that air cleaner more frequently. You got to maintain that radiator and cooling package more frequently. The dust and debris is getting in there in that cooling package as well. And then you've got to you know, maintain that cabin as well. I mean, we, you, we have pressurized cabins on our forestry units. And I definitely would recommend, you know, having a cabin if you're going into that, into that world and something with an external filter to keep the dust and debris out from that operator, you know, take care of that air filter, take care of that cooling package. And, you know, if you're mulching very often, think uh, heavily about the, taking the reversing fan option of cooling packages, right? We make it standard on our forestry machine. You can option it on some other machines. If you're in the forestry world, any you know, significant amount of time, that reversing fan will uh, will save you maintenance and, and time um, over and over. Yeah, I, th I think the and maybe the last thing we'll you know before we before we uh, sign off though, I I, I want to give you some kind of, some kind of time to kind of expand a little bit on the some of the last things you were saying there with the with the forestry machines. Um, you know, uh, how, you know, what are some of the other kind of considerations that you guys are taking whenever you're designing these forestry specific machines? I mean, we've hit on some of them already, the cooling, the protection, uh, the horsepower. Um, is, is it really that combination of things? Uh, uh, tell us a little bit about that. I know that the undercarriage obviously is another really big factor whenever it comes into, uh, into that as well. Yeah, I mean, the big hitters on a forestry model for us uh, is the operator protection first and foremost, right? We add protection there in the poly door, the poly side, level two falling out of protection, and all those things to make sure that the guy in the cabin is is, is uh, safe and protected from the environments. The cooling package, of course, having you know a cooling package that can handle those loads standard, not you know not having to add some optional thing on the roof or something later. Uh, putting those standard in the machine is. And then putting the guarding in there for both, you know, the hoods, the packages, the radiators, the lights, all that guarding required. And then, yeah, last but not least, don't overlook that undercarriage and what it can do for you in the woods. So, you know, with the AFD machines, uh, forestry models, uh, you know, our RT-135 forestry, we built a 20-inch wide track with a four-wheel guiding system in the undercarriage and four lug guiding on the track, right? So with that, what you get is exceptional track um, guiding the fact that that track comes off. Well, the last thing you want when you're out there in the woods on a side hill up against the tree is that track to derail. So, you know, with the four wheel undercarriage and those guiding surfaces, we actually add a, a two year unlimited hour uh, warranty to that uh, system where we, we guarantee you no know, derailments, right? A track anti derailment guarantee. And uh, means, you know, go out there in the woods, act the fool. Um, with that, with that guarantee, if it wasn't come off, we come up and put it on for you. Just believe it isn't coming off, right? So, think about that track, the guiding surfaces, and then think about suspension. We also on the forestry machines put our uh, 
torsion axle suspension on the undercarriage as well as our suspended wheels. And all these things do, the suspended wheels really help um, guide that track on that uneven terrain. You're driving over, you know, logs, stumps, material in the woods, and the ability of that track to stay in contact with the ground uh, gives you just really an unprecedented advantage in traction and stability when out there in the woods. Yeah, I mean, I, I think my biggest uh, takeaway after our chat, uh, Buck, is is that, you know, if, if this is something that you're looking to invest in, uh, if you're going to be, uh, you know, putting your money toward uh, a drum mulcher, it it really feels like the drum mulcher itself is really only like maybe 20 or 30 percent of that buying equation. Uh, and that uh, in terms of which one you're choosing, it, it sounds like the machine uh, almost has like an outside kind of uh, or an outsized impact on, uh, you know, the investment as well. It really kind of depends on if you have the right machine uh, to, to, to do this work in the first place. Yeah, there's the work tool and the carrier, right? The drum mulcher is the work tool and the machine is the carrier. And, uh, you know, I don't know, think about it like baseball, right? The bat is the work tool, but without the right carrier, that bat's pretty useless. So, you know, we want to make sure we make that drum mulcher with the right carrier as well. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Buck, uh, man, thank you so much. Uh, is, there, is there anything for joining us today, but is there anything else that, that you wanted to mention uh, to the folks out there uh, that they need to know about, you know, uh, choosing the right drum mulcher, but also making sure they've got the right machine for the job. Boy, I think we hit on it, Wayne. I uh, think you asked the right questions along the way and appreciate chatting with you. Yeah, Buck, man, thank you so much again. Really appreciate it. Great talking to you today, man. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. All right, guys, well, that's going to wrap up today's conversation on drum mulchers here on Machine Heads from CompactEquipment.com. If you like this video, found it informative, and it helped you in any way, please do us a favor and hit that like button. And be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. Uh, ring that bell uh, to turn on notifications so that you don't miss a video from Machine Heads in the future. And uh, if you have any suggestions or comments, be sure to leave those in the comments below. We always love hearing from you guys. Thank you again for watching. We'll see you in the next one.